Hello, my friend, and welcome to Genealogy Gems podcast episode number 246. It's October of 2020, and just around the corner are the holidays. We've got uh, Christmas coming up and lots of people thinking about gift giving. I know I'm already working on my list. And one of the gift giving challenges can be that we've got people in different parts of the country. And that means efficiently getting gifts to them. So I think this episode is actually going to come in kind of handy because we're going to be talking about creating family history videos with Adobe Spark. It's a free app that you can use on your phone, your tablet, or your desktop to make quick and easy, fun videos. I think that videos are great for gift giving. I've done them many times. I kind of use them in place of greeting cards, really. And who wouldn't love to receive a a wonderful video that you put together yourself, whether it's the story of your friend or your loved one, your family member, or whether it's the family history. Uh, Adobe Spark Video is a really easy way to put this together. So that's what we're going to do. Now, this audio is coming directly from the 11s is with Lisa show. And I know lots of you are on the go and podcast listening is the way to go for you. And you don't always get a chance to sit down and watch the show on YouTube. So I'm bringing the audio here to you today. If you already saw the episode, I think this is going to be a nice refresher and get you started thinking about what you might want to do in terms of making videos now and for the upcoming gift giving season. So we're going to talk about using this free app. Now, once or twice, I mentioned that, uh, you know, here's a video that I put together and you want to see those videos, go to the show notes for this episode. Those will be on my website at genealogygems.com. And under podcast in the menu, you go to the Genealogy Gems podcast. Just click on episode 246 and you'll find information there as well as a link over to Elevens is with Lisa episode 16. That was the one devoted to creating videos with Adobe Spark. And you can uh, jump to different parts in the video to be able to watch the example videos that I showed. But I think you're going to get a real sense of how easy this is to do and kind of step by step, what's the thought process behind how this app works so that when you sit down with it, it's going to make a lot more sense. And if you're not driving or working out or doing one of those very active things, you could even pull out your phone and work along with me. Now, I do want to mention that Adobe Spark video, to the best of my knowledge, is not currently available on Android devices. Not to say that it couldn't happen tomorrow and they keep saying that they're going to do that. But the good news is that you can use Adobe Spark video on desktop as well. So don't be discouraged. If you're an iPhone user, go get it from the App Store. If you're an Android user and you don't see it in the App Store, you can go on your computer desktop or laptop and you can use the Adobe Spark video uh, functionality over at their website. So without further ado, Let's dig in to using Adobe Spark Video to make family history videos. We're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm really excited about it. We're going to talk about how to make a video, a family history video. But you know what? The truth is, you're going to learn how to make these videos and you're going to be able to use them for all kinds of things. I have found that I am using them more and more as greeting cards, right? So we all have birthdays and anniversaries and special occasions. Cards are really getting expensive. Uh, It's harder to get out to the store to get them right now anyway. So what could be better than seeing yourself in a video? Who doesn't love that? So these kinds of little short, fun videos are perfect for making your own greeting cards, for telling your family's story, for just kind of getting the word in front of your family to let them know that uh, you value your family history and that there's something wonderful and fun and a lot of wisdom in our family history. And so we want to be able to share that with them. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Here's the thing. You're not alone in this. There is something that we all suffer from. It's the eye rolling of our relatives. Have you ever gotten that? Hey, I wanted to tell you about this genealogy find. Oh, right. You've seen this. Well, the truth is, we can talk to them in a different way. What if we could help them see 
family in a different way. Video helps us see it. So let's make a video with Adobe Spark Video, okay? You can do this on your iPad. You can do this on your phone. You can do it on your computer. We're gonna focus on the app. One of the first things you're gonna need to do is have content, okay? So whatever your one idea is, and we'll talk a little bit more. We talked about ideas in, in our past um, episode with Kathy Nielsen about how to develop a story for your, your um, video, but we're gonna even simplify it down further. So just think of it as one idea. So whatever this idea is, and I'm gonna have one for you at the end of this show because you're going to make a video and somebody's gonna win a premium membership if they make one. So keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> You're gonna get your content that, that supports your, your idea. Now this could be the home video clips, this could be photographs, it could be um, little sayings or quotes or things that you want to include in text. For the photos and the videos, we're gonna to need to put them somewhere on the cloud so that we can get them on our phone. And I use Dropbox to do this. If you use another cloud service, you can absolutely do that. Most of the major ones are supported with Adobe. I can tell you for sure that Adobe Spark does support um, Dropbox, and you're going to make copies. So wherever you have, and I did this last night because I made a little video I want to show you today. I went on my computer and I found all the digitized um, photographs that I had in the home movies and I made a copy, put it in the Dropbox folder. That way, no matter what happens to it or if I inadvertently mess something up and delete something, I am not going to lose it. And I'll be able to access it from my phone. So what you're going to do to start after you get your stuff into a Dropbox folder is you need to get your free Adobe Spark account. Now, Adobe has just a basic overview free account, and um, you're going to go to genealogygems.com slash bargains and do that because I did some checking this week and I found a pretty good deal through them that will help support this show. It won't cost you anything if you use our link. But if you were to decide down the road that you wanted to get a, a premium subscription to Adobe Spark, you can do that. You can do it monthly, you can do it yearly, but you can do it through this link. If not, I think you can get also a free trial through this. So you'll be able to make some videos without the watermark at all. So at genealogygems.com slash bargains, set up your free account, okay? And you can absolutely just use this for free no problem. But you'll get a free trial. You'll get a couple of weeks um, for free. So uh, whatever they're, you know, depending on when you're watching this video, whatever is on that landing page might change, but it should have a special deal that you can't get elsewhere. So get your free account. Okay. And I would just do this on your computer. I think it's easier that way. Go onto our website, get it and set it up on your computer. Once you've got your account and you've recorded your password, then you're going to use the app. You can use the website. So I just wanted to show you, yep, there's a website. I actually think the website's a little harder to use. So if you want to do this the simple way, I think your smartphone is really the simple way. If by chance you don't have a smartphone, you're going to want to use the website. Okay, so let's focus on the app. This is on your phone. So you're going to go to your app store and type in Adobe Spark Video. Now, Spark has a couple of different free creative apps that you can download. You want the one for video. So you're going to download that. And when you get there, you're gonna press that plus sign to create a new project. I already have a couple of projects in here, so, but yours will be blank. Now, there are a few templates. Adobe will help you if you're really struggling for an idea on what to do. They have one called Hero's Journey, and each of the slides will just kind of jog you as to um, what to cover and what you can do in your story. I would suggest, and you'll, you'll notice that there are several on the website as well. I would suggest, let's just do a blank project. Okay, so we're just gonna do, you'll tap on, just go to the editor. It'll say, you wanna just go to the editor? Yeah, we're gonna do that. And this is what a blank project looks like. So it is a storyboard. At the bottom of the screen, you see these little chunks, these little squares and with rectangles. And this is your storyboard. And most video, film, whatever, it's all storyboarded out. And this is a wonderful tool 
to help you uh, create your story and also edit your story. And I'll show you that in a minute. So that's at the bottom of the screen. And whatever you see at the top of the screen, the big square, that's your first slide. So it's broken up into slides. On the slide, you'll see some plus signs and that's how you can add your stuff. Okay, whether it's uh, content that's video or photos or whether it's text. So I've noticed as I tap these, they don't always say this one's going to give you text or this one's going to give you um, a video or a photograph. But typically the one in the upper left corner that fill the entire um, slide, that's going to be photo or video. The one in the center would be text. That seems to be how that works hey, you can't break it, so just tap it and see what it gives you as an option. If it's not the option you want, go back and tap the other plus sign. These also will be determined by the layout. We're gonna show you how to change layout in just a minute, but this is a really basic slide. Notice at the bottom, look at the bottom of our screen. On the storyboard, the first slide, the blue one, number one is blank, that's what we're working on, and number two is credits. So there's only one slide in this video technically, and you're gonna be able to add slides. I tapped video photo, that upper left-hand corner plus sign, and so that lets me take images and videos off my phone. So you can slide to either video or photo, and whatever's on your phone, you can do that. Um, I mentioned putting your stuff in Dropbox. You can, I believe, and I, I don't typically do this. You can access Dropbox. I think it's a little complicated. So when I put stuff on Dropbox on my, and then I open it on the Dropbox app on my phone, I tend to save each item to my camera roll, to my actual phone. That way it's so simple. When I get in the Spark app, all the stuff's right there, I can see it. You can go into the Dropbox app via Spark. You'll have to give it permission to do that. But every once in a while, sometimes it seems like, where's my stuff? It's, it gets a little confusing. If you find that's the case, close Spark, go to the Dropbox app, and export, download those items to your phone, to your camera roll, so that when you go back into Adobe Spark, you'll see everything's right there. No hunting around for it. So that's your two options. Just keep that in mind. So I added a little video clip. I tapped one of the videos that was saved to my phone via Dropbox. And I can trim this. So you can see um, on the right hand side of my little video that's filling the slide. The scissors says I can trim it if it's too long. Um, I can continue the video to the next slide. If it's actually pretty long, I think Adobe has a limit on how many seconds of footage can be on one slide. So if it seems like it's kind of long, but you really want the whole thing, you can tell it to go to the next slide. So that's the second little circle there. And the third circle is you can silence the audio. What I noticed was that um, sometimes when you get home movies digitized, they'll have kind of a, like a white noise sound to them. If there's audio you don't want, or you were filming something at an event and people are talking in the background and you don't really want that in your video, then um, you can silence it. And yes, you can do the app in the iPad. Editing your digital video. Where did I get my, my home movies from? Well, I had a lot of old home movies on VHS. I had some on eight millimeter. So I sent them into Larson Digital. I've talked to you about Larson before. I think they're wonderful. They've done all my stuff. I just sent them another package. Um, and they sent me back MP4 digital files. Okay. And sometimes those files are kind of long. You may have video where you filmed, you know, five minutes worth, but you really only want little segments of video. You can edit your video right here in the app. You know, not that long ago, I used to take these long video clips that I would get back, which are just fantastic to finally have digital video of these v VHS tapes and eight millimeter tapes. And I would bring them into an editing program like Camtasia because they were really big. And I was like, oh, they're not going to be able to do that. But you can do it right in this app. Here is a video. It's, a, it's several minutes long, but I just wanted this little bit. I'm just grabbing this and you can 
click done and save just that little chunk on that slide. Click the plus sign to get a new slide. Go back to the same video. The whole thing is still there. I didn't, I didn't delete anything. And go back again and pick the next little chunk using the white levers. And you'll notice there's a little bar atop the white levers. If you click the rectangle bar, you can move it down the entire video. The circle levers will give you the precision on trimming it. I'm just clipping out of the same video and here's all my video clips. Now I didn't want these in this order. Tap and hold one slide, drag and drop it into a different order. If you want to delete one, you can press and hold it. That little menu will pop up. You can delete the slide. If I find another one, I press and hold that, drag it over, drop it into a different order. That's the beauty of storyboarding. Sometimes you, you put it together and you think that meets what you want, but in reality, it would make a little more sense in a different order. We press the play. Here's how it looks. Remember this video from a couple of episodes ago? So we took this long MP4 digital file and we were able to clip it into chunks and put it on each slide. Remember, press and hold. You can duplicate a slide. You can delete a slide. You can also add text. Let's add some text. Trained Oroville, that was the name of my video. So we press and held the slide where I wanted the text to show up. Let's play from the beginning. The little play button. So there's slide number two. How's that? It's kind of neat. Kind of went right with the music. Oh, it's over the name of the sign of the train station. I want to fix that. We can do that. So we're going to exit out. Go to the slide where the text is. And when we tap it, we can actually touch that text on the slide and move it up. You can make it smaller or bigger, but if we just tap and hold it, if tap layout, now we can tap and hold and move it up. So that way it's going to show up just above where the train station was. So you'll see things like that that aren't quite right as you're playing it back. And you can play back right from this slide. Perfect. Now it's not covering it up. If you want to share the video, we can tap share and then send it over to social media or email it to yourself, uh, whatever. So editing video into clips, one clip per slide. And when it's all done, we can send it. We'll talk about sharing uh, at the end of this presentation. So we added some text, kind of label our little video clips on the slides. We can also edit the slide length of or of the text or the photo slides. Adobe might essentially, uh, at the beginning, only make it two to three seconds. And you'll think, well, maybe I'd like this to be five seconds. So they have time to read the text. If you tap on the time, see the red arrow? Initially, it was set at five seconds. Once we tap that, we get the little slider bar. And now we can move it and adjust to exactly how many seconds we want. Here's the beauty of it. The music that you put behind this, and we'll add music in a moment, is going to adjust exactly to however long you make all your slides. So if all the slides by default are, let's say, three seconds, we're going to add text. We're going to, if you add a video, the slide will be as long as that video up to its limit, which I think was around 22 seconds. On the text slide, we're going to tap that number so we can say, let's give them seven seconds to read this text and close it up. And each slide has its own playback. So you can press the little arrow button, play it back and see, do you feel like that's long enough to read this slide and make your adjustments? Every slide has that control. So let's add some additional slides. You can see in my storyboard, I've put some video clips on some slides. I have text only, which I think is kind of effective. Think of it like silent movies. I'm a big silent movie buff. I love all the old silent movies. And titles are really interesting when you're watching silent movies because 
the titles, when the text comes up, it really makes you watch. It really makes you read and stay engaged. And I like that about text. So um, don't be afraid to put just a text slide. That's cool. We're going to press the plus sign. And uh, here is a new one. Now, it turns out that I put that in there and then I didn't want it. So I'm going to tap and hold slide number two and I can delete the slide. You'll notice there's also duplicate. This is going to save you time. If you have uh, text slides that say something repetitively throughout the video, if there's a video uh, clip that you kind of want to go back and reemphasize, you don't have to do it all over again. Just tap the one that's already there and duplicate it and then you can touch it with your finger and drop it where you want it in the storyboard, in the timeline. I'll be back with more on how to use Adobe Spark Video right after this. Today's episode is sponsored by MyHeritage, a global discovery platform enjoyed by 110 million people worldwide. MyHeritage has it all and offers a full-service experience that bridges your past, present, and future. The MyHeritage DNA Kit reveals your ethnic origins and finds your new relatives based on shared DNA. It's popular all over the world, and their constantly growing DNA database means that more matches to new relatives are just around the corner. You'll receive a percentage breakdown of your ethnic origins from 42 supported regions and weekly email updates as new DNA matches are found. It's also the leading DNA service for anyone with European origins. Make the most of your DNA results with a MyHeritage subscription and access advanced tools for genetic genealogy, like the theory of family relativity, autoclusters, shared ancestral places, and much more. Order your kit today at myheritage.com DNA. Already taken a DNA test with another service? Upload your DNA data to MyHeritage for free to receive DNA matches and access new discoveries. That's MyHeritage.com slash DNA. If there's one project that's been hanging over me the last few years, it's been getting all my old home movies digitized. It was really daunting because they're in so many different formats. I had Hi8, Mini DV, VHS, and even 8mm reels. I met the folks from Larson Digital at a genealogy conference a couple years ago, and they have really saved the day. They're awesome to work with, and they could take it all. So I was a little nervous about shipping my stuff out. You might be nervous about that too. I, I put half my stuff in a box and I FedExed it to them. And they got it the next day, and before I knew it, that exciting email arrived saying, here's all your old home movies in an MP4 digital format. That means now I can work with them. Turn them into little videos for social media, longer videos for family get-togethers. And I, soon after that, the DVDs arrived in the mail and everything looked better than it had before. So I just shipped out the other half of my tapes and I can't wait to see the movies that I haven't seen in decades. Do it now. Get your old home movies digitized. Visit larsendigital.com slash Lisa. Larson is with an E, L-A-R-S-E-N, digital.com slash Lisa. That's the page where you're going to find exclusive discounts just for you. Tell them that you're sending them your precious memories because you heard about it on Genealogy Gems and they will take really good care of you. Visit larsendigital.com slash Lisa. All right, back to video making. Now, layout. Adobe has some very simple layout guides to kind of change things up for you if you want to. Tap layout, and you can do this at any point while you're creating your video. And I've got a couple of options. I might want where text is side by side in a split screen. I might want everything full screen. Slide by slide, I can change this. So if I want the caption down below, but I want it on the video, by tapping caption, I'm able to put that caption right on the video itself, um, just like we put the text of Train to Oroville. So you can change the layout of each slide. Let's look at themes. In the past, products like this, like Adobe, Spark, Animoto, they've had some really neat 
very graphic type, um, colorful, creative backgrounds, themes. They're kind of moving away from that because they're generally kind of targeting the business audience, but they have a really great tool. It's free. So let's use it. We can work with it. We can take our own photos of graphics and things and put that on the backgrounds if we want to. Um, but now themes are more about color and that type of thing. So let's tap theme and let me show you what this looks like now. This is really about what type of font you want, the color you want. All of those things really impact the mood, right? So font, colors, music, speed of how fast things are going by, all of those things make you feel a certain way, right? Frenetic or inspired or kind of sad or, you know, whatever it is, you can affect it through this. So here's an example. Um, I'm using the title. Just play with them. You can do this all you want. Go tap each one, take a look at them. You'll probably have uh, an idea of which one you like based on the font but you can tap each one, the edit little button in the upper right hand corner, and you can change up the color. Each one of these has many different color combinations. So don't think that you're stuck with just this. You can tap it and try lots of different colors. See, we've got different color font. When you tap that little curvy directional tool, it will cycle you through all the variations on that color. So whether you want blue in the background or, or white in the background, blue font, it's all going to change right through there. So tap through it, play with it. You can't mess it up and see which one you like. And it's not that tough to go back and change it later if you want to. You just go back and takes a couple extra seconds. I made a couple of quick little edits to some videos I did last night. I was amazed how fast it went. I was watching it. In fact, it was about the timing and I was thinking, I don't think three seconds is just long enough for that photo. So I just went back in and tapped an extra second on each one, made all the difference. Same thing with color. So that's your theme. Now, resizing, why would you wanna resize your video? Because depending on how you're gonna share your video, you need a different size. When we tap resize, this is going to affect the ent entire video. And there's two options, there's square and there's widescreen. So if we think about where are our family members today, where do they hang out? Well, they're on social media, uh, that you might have a family history blog, uh, you might have a YouTube channel, you might just want to send them a video to watch in an email. If you're going to put it on something like Instagram, I put a lot of videos on Instagram on my uh, account, you need them to be square. And that's because Instagram really gives you the most real estate, the most visual space if you do it square. If you do a widescreen and put it on Instagram, it actually looks very squatty and you don't get very much um, viewing as you're scrolling through the Instagram feed. I think square probably is also better for Facebook. It will give you more real estate. It'll give you more visual as it goes through the feed. Widescreen is perfect for, you wanna show this on your TV, you wanna email it to somebody, you wanna put it on a YouTube channel. And everybody who has a free Google account has their own little place on YouTube to have a channel. You don't have to have a channel like I do where it's all public and everybody in the world can see it. You can have a channel that's private. You can just share links with family, uh, whatever you want to do. But it is a place to host videos for free. So that's what will dictate the size that you're going to use. Um, let's see here. Music. Adding music. Oh my gosh, this is what brings your video to life. So let's add music. This affects the entire video. Adobe Spark comes with lots of uh, royalty-free music that you can use. This is what's great because we all worry about, we don't wanna get in trouble for using music that we don't have permission to use or that's under copyright. So in the app, they have lots of different songs and they're all organized by mood. How do you want your viewer to feel? That's really what it's about. So uh, you'll notice at the top, it says choose from iTunes, choose from files. So um, below that, you'll start to see the moods, happy, sad, inspiring, dramatic, that kind of thing. So just scroll through it with your finger, just roll it up. And you can test listen to each song very quickly. And you'll quickly find the one that you like. You can add your own music, but just make sure that you have permission to use it. 
YouTube does have an audio library. So if you want to get in, it's kind of kind of confusing to find it. I admit it. Uh, I talk about it specifically in the premium video magic class. I'll show you how to find all that stuff because it's kind of buried. And if you're not a YouTube creator, you don't tend to find it. But there's a ton of free music there. And if you download it to your computer or your phone, you can then use it in these videos as well. It gives you more to choose from. But I think you'll be very happy actually with the selection that's available in Adobe. So you can choose from files and that would take an MP3 off your phone. If you don't want to do music, but you would like to have some very specific narration, you can narrate each slide in Adobe Spark, which is another really cool feature. But maybe you've conducted a family history interview. It's one long MP3 audio file or a WAV file. Although I'm guessing Adobe Spark probably just supports MP3. So convert it if you, if you have a wave. Um, but MP3 is a nice compressed audio file. Most um, recorders will give you that file. And you could upload that in place of music, just use the music feature, and you could have that entire interview and then put your photos and your videos to support what they're talking about. There's an idea. So here you can see how theme, color, and music set the mood and change the mood. This is exactly the same video I showed you at the beginning, but it's a little uh, more upbeat. It's a little more energetic, not too much, but it's got a little brighter color, a little faster music, a little faster graphics too, right? So I, ch I changed the theme to make it pop. <laughs> so that makes a big impact. Now I talked about narration. You might have recorded an interview with somebody and you want to upload that in the music, but you can also narrate your story. Uh, we talked about when we were, we were talking with Kathy Nielsen in the past uh, episode here at Elevens is with Lisa, we were talking about outlining your story. If you really want to tell a story. And I would say if you've been hesitant to create a video, maybe don't even just do a story. I've got a really nice, simple little idea, a little prompt for you at the end of this to start your first video. Once you get that one done, then I think maybe a story video would be a good one. Pick one simple story, something that can be told in, let's say three minutes, and it's on one idea. We're really communicating ideas here. Yes, you can absolutely make much longer videos. You can go into using programs like Camtasia, but we want to just start off by getting something put together and sharing it with our family. So you can add narration with each slide. We're going to see the little microphone button and you can click that and then you can start to talk. You'll have to have a microphone plugged in. So like I have my big studio mic, you might have one built into your laptop. You might have a, a USB mic that you can plug into your computer and then record. Okay, if you don't hear the recording after you do it, you just need to go check in your settings on your computer to see um, about how your sound is set up. If you're on an iPad or a phone, then it's going to be really simple because it's going to be the microphone built into your phone. You can also trim these so you can redo them all you want. Don't worry that the first time isn't the right one. I have done this before and re-recorded the same slide four times, you know, <laughs> and then you start to realize, oh, this is too long. That's usually what happens. This is too long. So you trim it up, you trim your little script, and you go back and you re-record it. It will keep the image on the screen as long as the audio is going. Now, I'm, I'm sure there is a limit to it, and I would guess it's, it's somewhere around 30 seconds or 20 seconds, but um, there might be a limit there as you do that, which just means go to the next slide. Just add another slide, and then you can continue on. Video is going to be dictated by how long the video clip is. If this video clip is only 10 seconds, I really need to keep my narration to 10 seconds. That makes sense. But you can change that as you go. At any point along the way, just click that playback button to watch what you've got so far. I think that really helps you with the creative process and you get a feel for, wow, this is really moving along or it's a little too fast or 
I think this is already too long and I need to take some things out and do those in a separate video. So you can play back with this gray button the entire playback or you can go to an individual slide and play back from that slide. Okay, so you don't have to keep watching the entire three minutes every time you wanna check your video. So you've added photos, you've added video, you've added text, you've tweaked the lengths, you've put text on screens, you've picked your colors and your fonts. It's so much fun. You've put it all together, you've played it back, you like it, you're ready to share it. Tap share in that upper menu. Sharing options. You can save this to your camera roll. Now, if you're using the free version, you're probably going to get around a 720 pixel size, which is fine for social media, okay? So when we talk about file sizes, social media requires lower resolution because they don't tend to play it back always at the higher, and it's gonna be viewed smaller, smaller on the screen. So you don't need as high. If you want that 1080 HD resolution, I believe you have to get the subscription. And we'll talk about the subscription in a minute. It's very affordable and you can also do it by month. So saving it to your camera roll will be at the highest resolution available for the plan that you have, okay? And that means now you've got an MP4, MP4. That's a video, MP3 audio. They may even do it as an MP4V, which is like video. So that will be a digital video that you can use other places, send other people. You can post to Facebook, you can put it on Twitter, you can send it as an email, and you can also text message it to somebody. I mean, it is, there's no excuse not to be sharing fun little quick family history videos. And like I said, wonderful greeting card. Uh, you can also copy the link to the clipboard. So if you copy that link and you just wanna send the link, it will take them to the website where they can watch your video. So lots of different options. So let's talk about the subscription. You can absolutely do this totally for free. If you do it for free, you're going to have a little watermark in the bottom corner and it will say Adobe Spark video. No problem, it's light gray, it's not obtrusive and it's the right price. Um, you will also not have as high, you can't get that full HD quality on the export. But if you're doing social media to start, you probably don't even need it. You can do monthly or you can do yearly. And here's the thing, you could plan a couple of videos, plan them out, do your little, you know, you could storyboard on paper if you want to. Pick some of your content, get your Dropbox folder set up, do that little bit of homework. And if you really want that full HD and you don't want the watermark, then you could just subscribe for a month and you could do as many videos as you want. So you can create lots of videos. You can also do it for a year, which would save you maybe, a little, well, I guess it does save you a little bit of money, yeah. So um, at the link, when you click the image on my bargains page, that will get you the free trial. So if you play your cards right and spend a day or two and get some stuff together, go get your free trial, you'll be able to do it without the watermark and get a couple videos done. Awesome. Spark, like I said, includes other apps as well. So when you get the subscription, you also get Spark Page and you get Spark Post. All the images that you've seen me do for Elevens is with Lisa, my little cover pictures, everything I do is in Spark. So Spark, I literally do it all on my phone. Um, I don't even, I don't like using the website as much. I like the phone. It's really easy. I can do it wherever I am and I can make those videos. I create templates. It's just amazing. So uh, Spark Page will actually make like story pages. And I'm thinking we'll, we'll probably do that in a future episode because they are really kind of cool. They're a little trickier if you're not used to making web pages, but they're fun and they're very shareable. You get all of that if you do subscribe. So I wanted you to know what your options are. What I would suggest is get the free trial through our link. And then if you decide later you want it, you'll be able to get the deal as well, that 20% off. So I don't know quite how long that's going to go. They said limited time offer, but I'll bet you it'll be for a little while. So thank you so much for using the link. That helps support this free show. We appreciate that. So tell your story as well, not just your ancestors and tell your family's story. Here's a story that I told for Father's Day. Mm -hmm. 
that was an event. I had photos and, and on my phone. I made that in just a few minutes. I sent it to my dad for Father's Day. He loved it. He, who doesn't love seeing themselves on a video? They love it. Capture your story. Capture your relative's story. Share your ancestor's story. It's all really, really important. <laughs> and my grandson's doing the happy dance because I think you're going to do some happy dances, some genealogy happy dances when you make some videos. Uh, I wrote about Adobe Spark in my book, Mobile Genealogy, so that's available at Genealogy Gems. Thank you, Joey. He's such a good happy dancer. Okay. All right, let me get back here. Where are we here? Hi, Joey. I hope you enjoyed that. See, it's pretty darn simple. It's just tapping. Real simple. Let's look at a couple of questions that you had. Can you talk about the, the difference between Camtasia and Spark? Yes. Spark is a website and it's an app, but think of the website as an app as well. It's basically a big app on your screen. You have to have an internet connection. The projects that you finish will be hosted on their website uh, in your account. They're not public unless you make them public. Camtasia is software. So Camtasia is download the software, purchase it one time, download it. You're not paying monthly subscriptions. And the range of editing tools and things that you can do with it are almost limitless. So it's really super flexible. And it has a library of graphics and music and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's really the difference between um, something like this. But this tool is something that everybody can use. Camtasia, other uh, programs that are out there as well, software programs, they take a lot of getting used to and uh, some time up front to really learn the program. Um, if you're going to be making a lot of videos and you really want full flexibility and tons of uh, great options, then that's the way to go. Um, do we have privacy issues if we create a video with our family photos without the individual's permission and post on YouTube? Um, I suppose you might if you've got you know, relatives that give you a hard time. I don't know if they'll take you to court. I hope not. It never, ever, ever hurts to ask. And I think that's always a really good thing to do. Um, even then somebody can say, I forgot I told you that I didn't tell you that. So I mean, you got to think about who you're dealing with and who's in your photographs. But yes, I think it's always good etiquette to go and ask and let people know. When I um, was going to use Joey's little happy dance video, I took that video and everything, but I checked with his mommy and made sure that it was okay. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. Does Spark only take JPEG photos? What about other types accepted? Uh, interesting, because long ago, I used to scan it bitmap. I don't know why I, I was doing that, but I was scanning bitmap images. It will not accept those BMPs. So I had to go back in and convert those last night in order to get them into my video. Yeah, so you will have to convert some. I didn't check to see if it would accept TIFF. And we'd have to check that. I know for sure JPEG is probably your safest bet. I was actually using another tool made by the same company that makes Camtasia, which is called Snagit. And I was using that to convert mine very quickly. It went really fast. Um, let me look here. What else? So I had some of you folks where I was asking about what are some of the things that are getting in your way of making videos and um, time you can literally make videos as a passenger in the car while you're headed some to the dentist. You can do them on your phone. You can do them at night when you're watching TV. You can, it, it's so simple. And you can pick these projects up and put them down. I think the thing that takes the most time and you need no interruption is picking your pictures. So I probably spent an hour last night going through all my digital files on my computer and picking things out and trying to think about them. And I and Bill came in, he's like, Oh, my gosh, you're so quiet. What are you doing in here? And I was just going through them so intently. So that was the main thing. Once I got those in that Dropbox folder, then I can pick this up and put it down and do it on my phone all the time. Equipment we talked about, you just need a phone, you need an account and you need a finger. File formats, MP4 is what you're going to get out of this. So that's a very universal digital type. What to cover? Okay, we'll talk about that in just one second. Uh, yeah, you can use an iPad. So go into the App Store and get uh, Adobe Spark. 
and I'm going to go through all of your questions. I will write answers to them. I will post them on the show notes page for this episode. So we will absolutely, and if we need to do another episode, we will. And we're going to talk about video again in just a moment. I'm going to read this because I wrote this down. I want to make sure I told it to you right. So we're in our fourth month of COVID. Our lives just don't look like they used to right now. We're not getting out that much. And sometimes things just aren't that cheery. So I thought that it would be a really good exercise to go through my old family photos and see if I could dig up some cheeriness. That's what I did last night. Remember one idea. Hmm. Do I have fun loving, crazy, wild, happy ancestors in photos? I realized while I was spending a couple of hours last night quickly going through the photos that I've digitized uh, so far that cheeriness, happiness, giggling in photos was common in some of our family lines, very common and very uncommon in other family lines. Now, obviously, people farther, you know, back in time often were told to be quite serious in their photos, but it's, it was interesting um, to see some of the differences. Bill's got some very fun loving people in his family. <laughs> As I found the photos that made me smile, I copied them into a Dropbox folder, right? To get ready to make a video. So I would find one, I'd go, oh, that's so cute. And I'd do control C and copy it and get it over into a Dropbox folder. So I wanted to show you a quick little video I made last night with Adobe Spark. How easy! And I did that last night, really quickly. It was just kind of a last minute thought. So here's your task. This week, this next week coming up, make a folder. Okay, make a folder on your computer. Uh, make it a cloud folder so it can share to your phone. Go through your digitized photos and copy the ones that make you smile. I bet you've got some. It's actually really fun going back up through your, your photos. Then... I want you to go to genealogygems.com slash bargains. Remember we talked about that page. Get your free Spark video trial and download the app to your phone so that you can access the images that you put in your cloud app on your phone. If you want to do it on the website, that's okay too. But I, I did, we did talk about the app today. Uh, the music will be super easy because we're going to be looking for the happy mood music. So scroll through and find happy, listen to them, pick one out. This is your chance to bring some ancestral happiness to your family, no matter where they live. You can email it to them, you can post it on social media. And if you do post it on Facebook or Instagram, tag me. That's your task this week. I want you to embrace this is easy. There's no rules. Um, it's okay to make mistakes. You can change it up. You saw how easy it is to do that. You're going to put some smiles on other people's faces. Well, I sure hope you found this helpful and maybe got a chance to even do it along with me as you were listening. The trick to making videos is really just to do it. Download the app, give it a try, uh, set aside a couple of minutes to put together one story and start putting some smiles on the faces of your family. I know they'll appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments for me, I'd love to have you reach out. You can do that a couple of different ways. You can call me on the voicemail line 925-272-4021 and leave me a voicemail recording. I can answer your question right here on the podcast. You can also email me at genealogygemspodcast at gmail.com. And if you're not a premium member yet, and you liked particularly this idea of doing the videos, consider premium membership. Uh, in premium membership, you get over 50 different video classes with downloadable handouts. You get the premium podcast, loads of episodes there. And of course, for 11 with Lisa, you get the downloadable show notes. And in fact, now that we have so many episodes of 11 with Lisa on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, uh, we're actually going to be archiving some of the older ones here just for premium members. 
So it's real easy to become a premium member. Go to genealogygems.com and uh, under premium, click subscribe. It'll give you all the details, tell you how it works. Um, very affordable. It's good for a whole year long. And there's lots and lots to do with genealogy. Specifically, what you want to keep an eye out for that dovetails with today's topic is I have a full exclusive hour long class for premium members called Video Magic. This was a presentation I debuted at Roots Tech, and wow, it, <laughs> people were really excited about it. We were able to go into a lot more detail, particularly around story construction. If that's kind of a challenge for you, you know, what do I put in and what do I leave out and how do I make this interesting so people will actually watch it? That's what that video is all about. And along with that video is, of course, the downloadable handout. And finally, if you know somebody who loves genealogy, consider a premium membership for them as a gift. We do have that available. So they're on the subscribe page at our website. Uh, if you go down just a little bit down the page, you'll see information on how you can order a premium membership as a gift for one of your friends or family members. They'll love you for it because they'll learn an awful lot about how to discover their own family history. So until next time, thank you so much for listening, my friend. I'll talk to you soon.